Welcome to Weasel Jug Gaming, and today we're going to be doing um, our Sun and Moon Ultra Prism Imperial Command theme deck tactics. So we'll be digging into this one a little bit more, seeing exactly how you want to be playing this, what kind of uh, skills and abilities these Pokemon have, uh, what kind of general tactics, strategies you want to be using. First off, uh, we need to talk about energy. This deck is a water deck, exclusively just water. Um, nothing else in here. There are 20 water cards to power up your Pokemon. We'll dig right into our Pokemon to start off with, and we're going to start off, of course, with the starters. The, the Pokemon you want to have at the start of the game to get things moving early on. So the first one we'll look at is Corsola. Now, Corsola is not a very powerful Pokemon, and you don't want to be using Corsola for the Surf attack because that's an 80 hit point basic Pokemon with a 3 energy attack for 60 damage. That's not where I want to be risking my energy. Call for Family, though, is a decent starter Pokemon ability here. Um, search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. So it's a good way to fill up your bench. Now, usually this is not one of my higher priority kind of um, attacks to be doing for starter Pokemon. Usually you don't need a, a full bench right off the bat. But this deck revolves around having a full bench once we get to a particular Pokemon. So in this case, Corsola's attack to call family is a little more important than other cases. Next one we're talking about is Manaphy. Manaphy is a basic with 70 health. Um, has a 1 energy water pulse that does 20 damage and can put the uh, enemy's active Pokemon to sleep. So that gives you a 50-50 chance of them not being able to respond to Manaphy's attack. So as a, as a first, second round Pokemon, that's not a bad move. Um, you can nickel and dime away at 20 damage a round while keeping them asleep and hopefully avoiding you know, response damage. So Manaphy is a decent starter. Manaphy also has a one energy deep currents, which allows you to shuffle five energy cards from your discard pile back into your deck. This is not a highly energy dependent deck. There aren't a lot of big energy characters and you're not throwing away a lot of energy. So it's not necessarily a, a gigantic deal to keep Manaphy around for that deep current ability like it would be in some other decks. So using Manaphy from the start with Water Pulse is not bad. Next up, we're going to look at the Alolan Sand Shrew. This is a great early game play also. And the reason is because of that attack that has no energy cost. So Alolan Sand Shrew has a zero energy attack called Fury Swipes, which allows you to do anywhere between zero and 30 damage. You're going to flip three coins, for each heads, you do 10 damage. It's not a whole lot of damage, but for free, that's not bad. You get out there, you start doing some damage right off the start. Um, they may not even be able to respond to it very well or very quickly. And the bonus here is usually when you put a starter out there, you have to put an energy or two energy on it just to get it moving. In this case, you don't, which means you have more time to put energy on your benched Pokemon that you're maybe building up to do power attacks later. So, not a bad little starter right there. You do want to be careful, though, because Alone the Sandshrew evolves into something you do actually want to keep on hand. Um, so, don't just throw them away willy-nilly. If you have something else to use, you might want to use it instead. Next up is Buzel and Floatzel. Um, this is really only a good combination if you have both in your hand or you're willing to spend um, you know, your, your timer ball or your ultra ball or something like that to get Floatzel. Reason is Buzel isn't very good. Um, two energy water gun attack for 30 damage is not too impressive. Floatzel, however, is kind of nice. 100 health, has a 1 energy agility which does 30 damage, and you have a 50% chance of ignoring all of your opponent's damage against you. So that's not bad. If they have something out there pretty weak, you can just do small damage while defending yourself. 
You also, though, have that Aqua Blast, which is a 2 energy 80 damage attack that you do have to discard an energy for. But that's not bad, especially early on. If you can get Floatzel out there turn 2 with 2 energy and start doing that 80 damage, you're going to knock out a lot of basics. You're even going to knock out a lot of stage 1s. Um, you could really put yourself in position to get an early game lead and even scare some opponents into just conceding at that point. Um, so not a bad combination if you can get Floatzel out there early with a couple energy. And since the rest of the deck isn't really energy hungry, discarding a few energy this way isn't that big of a deal. Last up, you do have three Snowvers in the deck. In general, Snowvers not a great um, early game play unless you're facing a fighting deck. If you're facing a fighting deck, then suddenly Snover can do um, 60 damage instead of just 20. And 60 damage for two energy isn't bad. So if you're going against a fighting deck, Snover is a decent option. So that's it for our starters. We have uh, quite a few, lots of different options there. Having that many starters, though, does mean that we're going to limit ourselves in other ways. But we'll move on. We'll take a look at our defense now. For defense, we do have some interesting plays like Manafi, who can do that uh, sleep, which is a 50% chance that they're not going to be able to do anything in return. Another sleep option is Obama Snow. His Hypno Hammer does 80 damage and puts the opponent to sleep. You also have two Prim Plups. Prim Plup has that Bubble Beam, which only does 20 damage, but the enemy's active Pokemon is paralyzed. So that can be fairly decent too. And Prim Plup's evolution into Empoleon gives you Whirlpool which allows you to discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, in addition to the 90 damage. So you have some different ways that you can kind of mess with and control your opponent. Um, so it's not straight up defense, it's more kind of an active defense. Um, but they are good ways to slow down an enemy, um, make them rethink what they're doing, uh, make them waste some you know switches or something early on that they would maybe preserve, want to preserve for more powerful attacks. But that's it for defense. Nothing really big. A lot of it is just sleep. Um, a lot of it's fairly easy to counter, so not a real strong defensive deck, but there's a little bit there to play with. So now it's on to power, and as far as power goes, this deck does not have much going for it. The first power player we're going to look at is Obama Snow. Now, again, we've already talked about both of these guys a little bit, but Snover, again, if you're going against a fighting deck, is an okay option. Obama Snow, though, has 130 health, has a four energy attack called Hypno Hammer that does 80 damage and puts him to sleep. In the grand scheme of things, this is actually pretty weak. Four energy to do 80 damage is really not a good ratio. On top of that, the sleep that you're going to do, they have a 50-50 chance to ignore it outright, or they can switch or escape rope or something else to get themselves out of it. So it's not going to be a huge play, but it's there. It can do some damage. It can be a disruption. If you're lucky and you can keep them asleep, you may actually be able to knock some things out with this. Um, the nice part about Obama Snow that kind of makes up a little bit here is Blessing of the Frost. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach a Water Energy card from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. So this is a great way to recover a couple energy that maybe you blew through Floatzel's attacks um, later on in the game, or if someone got knocked out, you can recover that energy. That allows you to play a little bit more energy per turn, um, gets more Pokemon powered up and ready to go. So just evolving Snover to Obama Snow is a helpful thing, um, even if that attack isn't amazing. So what does that leave us for attacks? Well, there's really just the Primplup, Piplup, Empoleon line here. So 
Piplup really has nothing. Um, one energy splatter that allows you to do 20 damage. Primplup has the uh, paralyzing bubble beam and has a two energy wave splash for 40 damage. Neither one of those are all that impressive. So our big winner here and our big hitter, and really the only damage dealer in the deck, is Empoleon. Empoleon has 160 health, which is pretty impressive. Has a two energy total command, which does 20 damage for each benched Pokemon um, from both your bench and your opponent's bench. So if you have a full bench of five Pokemon, that's 100 damage. If your opponent has a full bench and you have a full bench, that's 200 damage. So Empoleon has the potential for some huge, huge hits. However, there's some downsides to this. As you knock out your opponent's Pokemon, you make your attack weaker. If your opponent knows what's in your deck and is expecting this Empoleon play, they can just not pack their bench with a bunch of junk Pokemon that they're not going to use anyways. Typically, when you're playing theme deck play, you have a couple bench spots that are taken up and just really never used, never utilized, never powered up, never brought to the active spot. If you just hold those in your hand when you're facing this deck, you, you take away Empoleon's power. Um, if you can't keep a full bench yourself, you end up cutting into your power. So Empoleon has the potential to do huge damage, up to 200. But then again, if you only have two Pokemon on your bench and they only have one on their bench... Well, now you're only doing 60 damage. So Empoleon can be kind of hurt that way. Now, Empoleon does also have that three energy whirlpool attack, which does 90 damage and discards an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. So that's a good backup attack to Total Command. Um, if Total Command's not going to pay off very well, you can go with your 90 damage whirlpool. Um, and what you're looking for there is at least five bench Pokemon between the two sides to do more damage. Although Whirlpool may, since it's going to ditch energy, may actually be more valuable in some situations. But for the entirety of your deck, that really is your biggest damage dealer and you're really your only heavy damage dealer. Um, behind that, you're looking at an 80 damage attack from Obama Snow. That's not very impressive. So this deck really lacks a lot of that power. Now, we haven't talked about everyone in um, the uh, deck here yet. We still have uh, one more, and that is our Alolan Slant Slash. So we already talked about Alolan Sand Shrew, who's got that free attack. Alolan Sand Slash is pretty powerful in his own right not as an attacker um, but as a utility card so alone sand slash has 110 health has an ability called slush rush which is really what you're using this card for once during your turn before your attack you may draw a card you do have two of these sand slashes in your deck so if you can get both of them down that's two free draws every single turn since you're going to want a lot of guys on your bench anyways for Empoleon to really do his damage, having two Sand Slashers just sitting there doing draws for you every turn is actually pretty good. Um, so that's really what you want Sand True and Sand Slash going towards is just stocking your, your bench with these Sand Slashes. His three energy smash turn only does 50 damage, which is, not, again, not a very good ratio for energy to damage. Does allow him to switch spots with someone on the bench. So if you're in a situation where you have Sand Slash on your bench and you've put some energy on him and you need to delay, um, that's a good way that you can feed other Pokemon that don't have any energy on them. Um, you can put Sand Slash in, do his attack, pull him back to the bench. That way you preserve those draws while putting someone else in the line of fire. But that's it for our Pokemon. Again, Pretty weak deck when it comes to straight up attacking. You're going to be totally relying on Empoleon to do your damage, and Empoleon totally relies on both benches being full or fairly full for you to really be able to do damage, especially to the higher health um, or high defensive cards out there. 
So with that, we're now moving into our support cards. And as always with our support cards, we start off with our draws. And we have quite a few draws in this one. We have two hows. How allows you to draw three cards. We also have two Professor Kakui's. And Kakui allows you to draw two cards, plus gives you a bonus 20 damage for the round. So a couple nice draws there. Kakui comes with some bonus damage, which is going to be necessary in this deck. Next up, we do have a Lily. A Lily allows you to draw, draw cards up to uh, having six in your hand, or if it's your first turn, drawing until you have eight. We also have two Sophocles. Sophocles has you discard two cards from your hand. If you do this, draw two cards. Now, this deck has a decent amount of drawing and, and has some of this sacrificial drawing too. It is pretty important because you do need to really kind of get both sand slashes out there to get the draws rolling. You have to keep your bench stocked with Pokemon and you really need other support cards then to really keep things going. Um, just so you can keep damage going with Empoleon. So making that sacrifice to discard a couple Pokemon you maybe don't need in order to pull four more cards from the deck can actually be a helpful thing. Now don't forget that you also have um, Sand Slash for those draws also. So keep that in mind, keep those Sand Slashes on your bench so that you can get those draws. Next up we're going to talk about pulling Pokemon. And for that we start off with two Pokemon Fan Clubs. They allow you to search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, reveal them, and put them in your hand. You can, of course, play them to the bench if you have open spots at that point. Um, so not a bad card there to just kind of get your, your bench stocked up. We also have one Ultra Ball. Allows you to discard two cards from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it. Um, that's really going to be used um, to finish off your Empoleon line. So you can get him doing damage. Um, could be used early on to get Floatzel into play. If you have uh, Buzel and you have some energy, you could use Ultra Ball, discard a few things, and get Floatzel out there to do that early damage. It's kind of a high risk, high reward play early in the game, but it is possible. After that, we have our Timer Ball. So you flip two coins for each heads, you search your deck for an evolution Pokemon. Again, a good way to finish off the Empoleon line, or to get Floatzel, or to get um, Obama Snow so you can pull a, a energy out of your discard pile. Lots of good options there for that timer ball, and you do have two of those. And you also have one Rescue Stretcher. Rescue Stretcher gives you an option of two different things you can do for your action. You can put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, or you can suffle, shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. So, if you have both Empoleons in play and you lose one of them, you can use that shuffle um, three cards from discard back into your deck and get that whole line back into your deck. If you are sitting out there with a Prinplup and you lose your Empoleon, you can use Rescue Stretcher to get that Empoleon right back out of the discard and get him onto that Prinplup so you can get him back out there and start doing damage. So the couple ways you can use that Rescue Stretcher there just to get things moving, again, after you lose someone vital. Um, and it's going to be very important that you keep Empoleon out there, so that's probably where I'd be focusing that Rescue Stretcher. Um, for energy... We don't have much here, but we do have one Aqua Patch that allows uh, one energy card from your discard pile to be placed on one benched Pokemon. Keep in mind that it is a benched Pokemon, but it is pulling that energy out of your discard pile. Um, don't forget also that you have Obama Snow and Manafi to recover energy from your discard pile also. So there's a lot of different ways to pull that energy out. One thing to keep in mind, kind of a combo play of sorts, 
is if you do um, your Ultra Bowl um, or Sophocles and you use them to pull someone like Obama Snow, you can discard an energy card and Obama Snow is going to recover that energy card right away. If you're early on in the game, um, like first round or something, and or second round, I guess I should say, and you have Sophocles and Ultra Ball in your hand, you could get rid of a lot of energy and bring Manafi out there to recover all of that energy. So keep that in mind that you can even discard energy because you have so many ways to recover it from the discard pile in this deck. That's it for our energy, but we do have some control cards. We have an escape board. You attach this to a Pokemon, and the retreat cost of that Pokemon is reduced by one. Um, and you can retreat even if you're asleep or paralyzed. There's not a lot of tactics in play in this deck. There's no special situation where you need to pull a Pokemon out or replace them with another Pokemon or anything like that. So Skateboard is more of a defensive mechanism that if you have it in your hand, I would just keep it around for when you absolutely need to retreat someone from play or if you need to get someone recovered from sleep or paralyzed. Then you can use that Escape Board on them pull them out, out of the front line there, put someone else out. The other card you have is one Escape Rope. Escape Rope forces both players to change their active Pokemon. Um, again, a good way to get out of sleep, paralyzation, um, poison, fire, um, or just to switch your Pokemon if you really need to, or possibly just trip them up by switching out you know, a really good Pokemon they have for something weaker that you can actually knock out. So that's the entirety of the deck. We've talked about all the different cards. There's no healing in this deck from Pokemon or uh, support cards. So you're stuck with what any, whatever damage you end up taking. Um, you have a lot of energy, not a lot of different places to play it, not a lot of energy hog Pokemon, not a lot of attackers. A lot of early game options. You can really get moving early. Maybe put a hurt on them super quick to take that advantage. But after that, you're going to be depending entirely on Empoleon. So, so digging through that deck, getting Empoleon, getting Empoleon into play, getting him doing his damage with a big bench to back him up is really what this deck demands and survives on. So let's go ahead. Let's look at our stats. Now, our stats are going to be kind of off the wall here. Um, our power is only sitting at a 2. Reason that is, is everything depends on Empoleon. You don't have any big damage dealers. Um, even against like a fire deck, you're going to be kind of struggling to get a lot of damage out there if you don't have Empoleon. If one or both of your Empoleons or Primplups get stuck in your prize pool, you're going to be struggling to pull anything together with this deck. And your secondary damage dealers are all very weak with nothing getting over 80 damage. Um, and that takes a lot of energy just to get that 80 damage. So our power sits at a 2 because it all relies on one Pokemon. And that one Pokemon also relies on having full benches to really do any damage. Speed is our ability to get our Pokemon, our big power hitters, up into action and into play. And this deck's fairly decent here. Um, you have a lot of draws, you have a lot of pulls, and, and the Pokemon that you're going to be using don't demand a lot of energy. So it's not that difficult to get the Pokemon you want up to power and into play. Agility is how well you're able to switch tracks, to, to get different Pokemon on your bench and ready to go, to uh, get Pokemon powered up, um, to be able to keep the heat on as the game goes along and adjust to different situations. And agility sitting at a three. Again, with all the draws and all the pulls that you have to get the different Pokemon, since no one's really 
you know, going to be throwing away a lot of energy. Energy shouldn't be an issue. So it's a relatively agile deck. Not super agile, but not bad either. Energy efficiency is sitting at a four. You only have one Pokemon that throws any energy away. And you have a lot of ways to recover lost energy. So it's a very energy efficient deck. And a third of the deck is energy cards to begin with. So you're rarely going to have an energy issue with this deck. As far as complexity goes, it's a one. There really isn't anything at play here other than Empoleon's total command needing you to have lots of Pokemon on the bench. That's not a difficult concept, though. Resilience is only a two. Um, you only have two Pokemon with any sort of health, and that's Empoleon and Abomasnow. Um, not a lot of strong defensive abilities. Um, not a lot of, there's no healing, there's just not a lot of ways to keep your Pokemon alive through your match. So Resilience is sitting at a 2. Type Ability is sitting at a 2. The reason for that is the fact that everything in your deck is water. You have no other attackers, so it's a water-only deck. Gives you an advantage against fire decks, clearly. You do have a spread of weaknesses. Um, you're weak to Metal, Grass, and Lightning. Um, lightning being probably your biggest threat, uh, followed by probably metal as your second biggest threat. Um, Empoleon is a bird, so it's considered flying, even though, you know, penguins don't fly. Um, so it's weak to electric, and that's going to be your biggest threat is electric types. So you have a little bit of variety in your weaknesses, but not a lot of variety in your attacks. As far as manipulation, it's a two. Um, your escape rope, along with all the different sleeps and paralyzes and other things you can do, really do give you kind of a, a wide range um, of abilities to use. So you, know, you do have some different ways that you can play this deck um, and manipulate your opponent, but a lot of them are pretty weak and pretty passive and chance reliant. So not super strong. That's why our manipulation is at a two. All in all, the uh, Empoleon um, Ultra Prism Imperial Command deck, not very strong. Uh, one power hitter, if they get shut down in one of the numerous ways, you're going to be hurting. Um, everything relies on Empoleon being in play. There's really no backup. So all in all, this just isn't a great deck. Um, wasn't a great deck when it came out, although it was playable. In today's field of uh, Sword and Shield, this deck just cannot compete at all. Um, your best bet is going against one of the popular fire decks, which are pretty popular. Um, that gives you a chance to really get out there and start doing some damage. But even against those fire decks, I wouldn't give this deck a huge chance because it can get cut down just so easily. So hopefully you feel a little more comfortable with this deck, um, a little bit better information about it. You know its weaknesses, which abound plenty. Um, get out there and hit hard and fast with it and get a Polion up. Those are your big goals. If you can do that, you might be able to survive. So with that, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.